Hello everyone, I'm Michael Durkoff from Durkoff Studios and this is my review of the System76 Bonobo P5 laptop. For those who don't know, System76 specializes in making servers, laptops, and desktop computers for the Ubuntu operating system. And this one is the highest that you can get from System76, the Bonobo laptop. Now as you can expect, the P5 means it's in the fifth of its series. So let's go ahead and check out this laptop. Let's talk about the laptop in more detail. The inputs that we have here are SD, Firewire, USB 2.0, two USB 3.0s, LAN, and CATV. And on the back there's a GPU fan, power input, DVI output, HDMI output, ESETA input output, the CPU fan, and the Kingston lock slot. On the right side we have a USB 2.0 slot, a line-in, optical output, microphone, headphone, and a DVD CD burner drive. Now the optical out is a optical mini, a cable like this, and once you plug it in, Ubuntu will be able to use it, and it works great. So what's under this monstrous machine? Two solid state drive, 200 gigabytes of memory with six gigabyte of catch. The CPU and GPU, both with fans and heat sinks. 16 gigabytes of RAM and the battery. And what powers this beast? A brick. You measured this thing and it turned out to be 7.6 inches long. For scale reference, we put an Xbox 360 Slim power brick right next to the laptop power brick. Also an iPod Touch. The main color scheme of the laptop is pretty much jet black with white and few hints of blue and orange. The feel of the laptop casing feels sturdy, well built, and very nice. Though it does feel a little bit plastic, like plastic over metal. The keyboard looks nice and it's very responsive when I type it and also clicks on each key. Though it feels a little bit plasticky so in an intense battle on a game it feels like it's about to give under the pressure of my fingers. We also have indicator lights at the top of the keyboard which are the power, scroll lock, thumb lock, caps lock, wireless, load, and bluetooth. Also to note, the power button you have to hold down one or two seconds for it to boot. The trackpad supports multi-touch and it does it very well. The grooves on the trackpad are very nice, feels good, and it's something that's very nice to have, especially when using the laptop for certain amounts of time, though it's very sensitive. The thumbprint reader is unusable. It's hard to set up and hard to use, and probably shouldn't have been in the design. Now the speaker system is THX True Studio Pro, and unfortunately, they do not deliver. They sound like $400 laptop speakers, cheap ones, and the bass is non-existent, and when you're listening to music, watching movies, or watching online internet videos, it's just completely unacceptable. The display is an awesome HD 17.1 LCD screen. It's an awesome screen and plays very good with movies and games. Now as for the webcam, I expected the webcam to be pretty nice considering the price I paid, but to my disappointment it turned out to be an okay to cheap type of webcam. Although the quality of the camera is bad, it's not bad enough to go out and get an external one. Now the best game to represent Ubuntu would probably be the Uni Engine's Oil Rush game. Now with everything on high with the exception of anti-lasting, I was able to get the game to about 80 frames per second. Other games like the recent Humble Indie Bundle, those play great as well. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to be playing games in Ubuntu, it's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and let my brother take over and tell you of the games that he tried in Windows. After loading up Windows, the first game we tested was StarCraft 2. We started out with extreme settings at the highest resolution. To our surprise, we got more than 100 frames per second, but then in the late game, it went down to 70 frames per second. 
even with heated battles with multiple players with big armies. The next game we played was Crisis 2. In this game, we found a huge difference in performance. We started out with ultra settings in the highest resolution. While we were playing, we only got 26 frames per second, which to any gamer is unacceptable. We decided to keep the settings but lower the resolution a bit, and we were able to get better performance of 30 frames or more, which is still not ideal for an FPS. So in conclusion, this laptop has its flaws, especially in the audio and visual department. But to be fair, System76 hasn't really been known to be successful in the audio department. But this, this thing has a lot of horsepower, making it up for its flaws, making it a very good laptop for video editing, gaming for those who have external speakers or headphones, and any other programs that really need that type of horsepower. Now, of course, this thing is seven months old as of this recording, so the price has gone down a bit making this around to I've been told 3000 or more so because of this I'm giving this laptop 4 out of 5 stars that is my review I hope I'll see you guys next time